Bella secretly traveled to Ethiopia for military training under the name of David Motsamai. Um, have a look at the passport. We'll put it up on screen. This, uh, you are seeing a passport that was actually issued to Madiba in 1962. It is in Amharic, which uh, is uh, one interesting thing, but besides the name, is Madiba's profession. It says that he was a journalist. And this is how he managed to travel through uh, Africa on this passport as a journalist, but with an Ethiopian passport. One of the things that Madiba recently learned is that while he was in Ethiopia, the apartheid government knew where he was and had actually paid his minders to kill him. We're joined in studio now by Captain Guta Dinka, who not only looked after Madiba while he was in Ethiopia, but this man was ordered and paid to kill Madiba. He is with uh, Professor Mama Mochi, who will do the translation for us here on Morning Live. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, thank you very, very much for being with us. And uh, um, uh, Captain, welcome to you as well. Good. Um, let's, let's begin off by asking, uh, I have to ask age here. Yeah. How old was the captain in 1962? Centimetre number. Centimetre roughly. 45 years old. He was 45 yeah. years old. 35. 35, 35 years 35. old. 35. 35, so 35 years, old. years old. This is when he was he was yeah. selected to look after uh, Madiba. Madiba when he was in the country. Yeah. Um, how was he selected? How did the process work? Uh, he he was trained as a commander uh, by by a commando, and uh, and he was selected among 4,000 police officers. Um, and I think the main reason they, they, they selected him, but Madiba doesn't know he was looking after him. Really? He didn't know. No. So uh, why is two that? Pe two people were assigned that they look after Madiba, but they were no, Madiba was not supposed to know them. Okay. Yeah. So uh, were, were they with Madiba at all times, or did they sort of keep a distance? They, they keep a distance. They kept a distance watching him the entire time. But they watch him all the time to make sure that he's protected. Yeah. Okay. That now, was the assignment. Um, by the general, well, General Tade What is the, I mean, back in 1962, um, what was the Madiba then like? What, what are the memories of, of the captain that he has of Madiba then? Extraordinary. Uh, he, he said he was very uh, uh, disciplined, very organized, very cheerful, and uh, always worked, but also was friendly with the Ethiopians very much, yeah. and he remembers him like like that. And he was uh, he he was very upset. He didn't get a chance to get a picture with him because Madiba doesn't know him. He doesn't. Madiba <laughs> he still doesn't, he, to he this did, day. He did not know these two people. Know. He did not know at all. They were protecting him. Yeah. For over nearly three months. Yeah. But he never ever knew he them. He never ever knew. What this happened? was the assignment. What about the other captain? Where is the, he? The other captain, you know, the yeah, he's dead. Oh, he's, he's passed pa away. He's yeah. passed away yeah. since yeah. then. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. you have the memories all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about now this this order to yeah. kill Mandela. Yeah. Uh, this, where did it come from? It's it's the, 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 there are two people that came. One was a white man. One was a black man, who brought this uh, money also. And then they uh, selected another person who was a friend of his. Who they were trained together as a commander, an Ethiopian uh, person. And they mobilized that person, and I think that person agreed with them, that he was, well, was happy to, to, to get on with uh, strangling Madiba. That was, they wanted to strangle him. That was how they wanted yeah, to kill that, him. But they didn't want to do it. They wanted him to do it. Yeah, because he had, he had such he close access to him. Access to him, and uh, he was a regular person, and they knew the sequence, the time, when, when people would be away uh, in the evening, mm. shift. Uh, the shift. Mm. They the knew shift. all the pattern, so they knew they assigned him to do it. Uh, he didn't want to do it. He wanted him to do it. He wanted him yeah. to do it. Yeah. And this, was this gentleman from the apartheid government? Was he? The, the, was it an order from South Africa? Where did the order come from? I, I think it's the sec secu it's security services. I mean, we, we don't. We, I mean, it's very difficult to say, but uh, it looks it's intelligence services. Mm -hmm. But it's high intelligence. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But of course, the apartheid government in, it must be involved. Yeah. 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 How much money was he offered? 
2,000 pounds. That's a lot of money at that time. In 1962? 1962, yeah. 2,000 pounds. Yeah. Why didn't he do it? He's, he, first, he, he loved Madiba. Second, he was ordered, selected to look after him. Third, he says he's an Ethiopian. Uh, his values do not allow him to do that. And his religion, everything. He, was, he said he got frozen when they told him to do it. And they put him. They took him to a hotel, hmm. uh, to, to, called I2 Hotel, yeah. and uh, they made him drink, and they made him eat food. And he didn't. He got shaken. Yeah. He didn't know how to eat the food with a knife and fork. S he says he just got shaken and frozen by when they told him this. But he, they had to make him say yes. Yes. So he said, "I had to say yes to survive." Okay. And then they told him a, a fixed time. Within, by six o'clock, the thing has to be done. It had to be done. Six o'clock that six, day. That evening, yeah. That evening. The evening. So he, he immediately, when he, uh, they left him, he went straight to the general and told him, there's a threat. Uh, Madiba is under tremendous threat, and I'm under threat. All of us are under threat. Yeah. Then the, the chief, the <coughs> general, uh, ordered all of them to be under security, including himself. Yeah. He made sure that they are all under surveillance, and then uh, eventually they were found out. Okay. There was uh, an investigation. Yes. They were told all of them were taken, uh, blindfolded, and and they told their stories. Uh, and they didn't. Some of them didn't want to tell the true story, but they insisted they must tell the, the, the story, and they did. Yeah. And then they got thrown out. They didn't want to... The reason why they did this is because they, do, they want to keep the security for Madiba. They didn't want him to feel... Uh, they want him to, f to, to get his training properly, and they didn't want to make this a big issue. Sure. Uh, that's what uh, they did. That's and eventually they got thrown out. Those they guys were thrown out. out. The guy who was uh, the Ethiopian <coughs> guy, uh, uh, his name was Abraham. This guy who did this, uh, he was demoted and he was sent to a region where probably uh, in a very low, you know, where all kinds yeah. of malaria infest. They didn't want to put it in court. If you put it in court, it would be known. Yes. And then it would be dangerous. He would kill his cover. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, he everything. was undercover yeah. at the time. So they didn't want to do that, so they kept it secret. Wow. And uh, it, is it true but imagine what it means. <clears throat> if... Uh, if Madiba had been killed... If this you, man killed Madiba... Yeah, you would not have South Africa, no, trust me. we wouldn't. You would have a civil war. You would have had a tremendous chaos. So I think this man is extraordinary. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just proud of him. I, I, really. would, I would say the same. Yeah. So, so Madiba only found this all out in, in the year 2009. Yeah, and he found out and he, the letter, you saw the letter from the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Will you, will you get it out for us? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we can have a look at that. Yes, um, what, what is the letter? Now, the great emperor, Heli yeah. Hel Helasi, was, was, was the leader at the no, time. No, it's not the... He, he knew all about this. Yeah, he, uh, it's precisely how the, the emperor, uh, how much they informed him about this incident, I don't know. Okay. What he knows is that he made sure he had a great relationship with Madiba. They, they liked each other very much. Yes. Uh, that, that I know. But yeah. I'm not sure they informed him yeah. about this. I'm not sure. Not I'm not too sure. sure if he, he but knew I think about the general knew. Yeah. And then the, the, also the, the colonel who yeah. was training uh, Madiba, who was interpreting for him, he knows also English, uh, who is the picture there. He, yeah. he, he knows. He was involved. Now, I know uh, that there's... And the letter was... Uh, I don't know who took it. Oh, don't worry about the letter. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, find yeah. that yes, and read yes. it to but our viewers. But Madiba said, said acknowledged that he... he, that he, he thank God he knew that they were going to kill him uh, before he died. I think he, that was good that he knew about it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the gun. Because this, this is actually the... Um, uh, yeah. There's a movie being made all about right. this now. This man actually trained yeah. um, Madiba at the yeah. time while he was in Ethiopia. Mm. And... It, it, I've actually got I've got Nick uh, Volpe on the on the line right now. Nick is from Lily's Leaf Farm. He actually looks after it as a as a museum. Nick, thank you for being with us. It's good to have you on the line. Good, you know, um, good morning, and yeah, my pleasure. How are you? I'm very well. Are you listening to the story? Is this not the most intriguing story, which obviously it, you knew all about? Well, not the 
story regarding the assassination attempt on Nelson. That was fascinating. That whole, I mean, that's a completely new Brand angle. New. Um, I think it's, apart from obviously the Mandela Foundation, I think no one is really very much aware of that particular event while he was on his secret African mission. It's incredibly intriguing and fascinating. It is fascinating. It's amazing. amazing. I mean, this is, yeah. this, is, this is massive news here, I have yeah. to tell you. I mean, everybody, I think, hanging on to every word you're yeah. saying. But I want to talk more about the gun. And Nick, I'm going to bring you into the conversation. <clears throat> but let's, let's first talk about the gentleman in the photograph who, who actually trained Madiba while he was living in Ethiopia and gave him this gun. Let's talk about that. Yes, this is the letter. Oh, that's the letter. We'll have a look at that now. Yeah. Ha uh, tell us about this man. The, uh, look, uh, yeah, he, he was commander of the, of the, of the forces, uh, and he was assigned specifically to train Madiba, and he knew the English language, so he was also, he became his friend. Yes. But he gave, I mean, more than anything, the BBC had uh, done a very good report on him, on the relationship and all he says is how the m most beautiful thing he says about Madiba is just it's extraordinary yeah. as how he said um, I used to get more exhausted than Madiba <laughs> when well, he trained him because <laughs> he was such a fit man he was completely driven condition. he said yeah. he wanted to really know everything yeah he said Madiba and, amazing and 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 was fun I mean, he, was a fun he, he man did it. Well. He did it with a sense of joy and yeah. fun. He said. Now, now yeah. he gave Madiba the gun, the infamous yeah. gun yeah. that we're looking for, the shotgun. That's right. Yeah. Nick, talk to me about this gun now, because this is where you come into the picture. No, he, the, 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 there were two things he brought, Madiba. He brought um, the gun yeah. and the picture of Emperor Haile Selassie. Okay, so those are the two things. The two, and then uh, when the authorities here uh, yeah. captured him. They took both. All I right. think. Yeah. Nick, talk to me about the gun now. Okay. Well, I mean, the gun, we became aware of the gun back in 2003. Um, up until that point, um, the gun had kind of disappeared from the historical landscape. We weren't, even, you know, even though there's reference to it in his book, A Long Walk to Freedom, the reference to the gun really shocked us and surprised us because on his visit in 2003 as I was walking out of the main house with him up the path towards what at the time was a little museum he asked me if I'd found his gun that he had buried at Lily's Leaf which as I just mentioned we were totally unaware of which then precipitated a long investigation and you know discussion at first you know there was my professional team were slightly taken aback and they were of the opinion that Nelson was actually referring to the revolver that he had on him at the time of his arrest. However, during the course of the research and the investigation, we uncovered the fact that on three previous visits to Lily's Leaf in the 90s, he had pointed out to individuals, one being Alistair Sparks on one occasion, which Alistair Sparks then wrote a story on about the gun, and on two other occasions when he went there, the owners of what was Lily's, the main house, recalled two separate occasions with them being taken to the back of the house and Nelson pointing to the property but joining it and saying, that's where I buried my gun. Yeah. In 2005, we purchased that property. And very unscientifically, I have to say, and embarrassingly, we started, we dug up the, the area, but we didn't find the gun. Now, when it transpired, but because we hadn't done it in a scientific fashion, we were wrong. But let me just backtrack. We also then discovered um, that Arthur Goldreich knew about the gun because he then goes on in a wonderful interview to describe how when he arrived back and was surprised to see Nelson back at Lily's Leaf, mm. he and Nelson walked out of Nelson's room up toward the boundary of the farm on Ripfontein Road, and he says, that's where he showed it to me. Yeah. And I reached out to touch it, and he slapped my hand as if to say, no, you can't touch it. Yeah. But he said it was a semi-automatic Macross pistol. And it was, now the question then that came up in, during the course of our uh, research was, who gave him the gun? Originally, we had just assumed that it was given to him by his um, military scientific instructor, Tedesus. Yeah. Um, but then gradually 
it became apparent that that wasn't the case. And in fact, we tried through someone from the Ethiopian embassy, a woman by the name of Hannah Til uh, Tilmay, she put us in touch with Nelson's driver at the time, a Mr. Binker, who was a, a junior in the foreign office at the time. Yeah. And in our yeah. communications with him, he said, no, no, the, okay. the, the Tedesis would not have had the um, yeah. mandate or the power to give him the gun. It was clearly instructed by or given to him through him by yeah. Haile Selassie. All right. Uh, Nick, wow. I mean, this is, this is incredible stuff that we're talking about. And I don't know if you, viewers are not going to love me for doing this, but we have to take a break. So um, <laughs> I hope we can get more in, but stay there. We've got to take a break.